Zach Rabbit here. Continuing down the rabbit hole of um, legacy source code analysis. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a look. Anyway, we um, if you watched the previous video, then we were able to um, build the Amos Pro and Amos Pro compile. Um, and we use the sources that are available on this site, on this GitHub page. But then it actually has an extra subdirectory, Amos Pro sources, which is very strange since we compiled Amos Pro with the compiler without using that subdirectory. And uh, then the question is that what is that subdirectory and what does it contain? Now, um, if you read the readme, then basically that uh, that GitHub site had taken the source for the um, sources um, from um, uh, uh, this site, and as you see, this site does not have such a um, um, subfolder. So, I actually did some analysis of the folder, and. Um, It does seem to have some a partial set of source files for the MS Pro, but it's got other other source also. And, um, and as I said, we, we built the whole system and we didn't use anything from this folder, so, so that was where the confusion started. What's this folder for? Um, a comment on using a plus uh, suffix on the files that. Um, this subdirectory does not follow the same logic as the root folder. And the root folder always follows the logic that if it's a plus at the beginning of the file, then it's um, and an S type of file type, then it's on um, assembler. But <laughs> in this case, it's just whatever. You can't rely on that um, on that um, yeah, convention. Uh, also, this has um, and we'll look at it. In, you know, as we just scroll through with the um, files that are there that. Um, uh, the assign folder is being used. Uh, uh, they refer to s to devices that don't exist when you do the normal setup, like uh, we did in the previous video. So uh, you you can't run any of this. It refers to uh, yeah. We'll, we'll have a look at, it, but it refers to devices that don't exist. Uh, and this has lots of binary files in it, and they are quite obviously like working files um, that, that could have been cleaned away but never were not cleaned away. Uh, there's also, and we'll have a look at that also, there's also indications using quite a few uh, commands that don't exist in the standard Amiga OS and um, the development setup you get when you download the um, GitHub repository which we were able to compile so you know, we'll have a brief look at that. Ah, here it was. Uses devices like uh, Net, so it seems to be using a network resource, and that was actually new in those days, 30, 30 odd plus years ago. It wasn't so common that people had a network to address. And now we take it just as granted. It's like any any local disk or you know, cloud storage and everything. But in, in those days, it was ah, oh, I have a network drive. Wow, you must be really important. <laughs> And um, currently, my interpretation is that this is a, a kind of like a, 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 a copy of uh, one of the original French developers' um, working directory, not cleaned up or anything, just thrown into the. Um, I, I don't know why they put it in the GitHub because it's it's um, <laughs> it makes it extremely confusing. I am assuming that this directory actually, if you were in depth into this, then it contains probably stuff that's not in the uh, main repository level that they, they wanted to actually just have have available. But anyway, let's let's have a brief roll through it and make some comments and, and um, so we have a directory double source and I mean this is actually interesting that it actually has some some kind of like pseudo list of dialogues used for in the um, compiler um, and then the tiny shelf of the compiler so so 
So I don't know if there's like a top level program that then use this to um, do stuff. And then it has a docs directory. Now the, the I have not been successful in extracting this one yet, but it actually you, if you use um, uh, WinZip, then you can open this and you can see what files it has. But if you try and extract the files, then it says, "Oh, can't find the, find the compression algorithm." But I think it's just to uh, could probably dump it into um, uh, Linux and, and, and get it um, extracted. Or um, look at this sort of. Uh, I, I found an article on probably this is how you expand um, uh, WinZip to cover the the internal LZH. But anyway, it might contain um, interesting stuff. Uh, and then this is interesting. This is like, uh, seems to contain like the first pass at integration of the compiler into the main product <laughs> of historical importance. And then we got some binary stuff. Um, then there's a you know, a little bit of documentation about the uh, initial uh, disk layout and um, how to use the compiler and new command line. Because th this is obviously of the phase at the very end when they were actually uh, bringing in the compiler into the Amos Pro and then they were going to ship the whole 2.0 with the compiler. Uh, as we see here, Amos, uh, Amos Pro compile forward. <laughs> And then this is about a little bit about installation. Um, and they've been doing testing, so there's a bit of information about um, how they've been, um, how has it been going. And then bugs and animals probes. So some historical reflections. Um, yeah, yeah. The little little blinking uh, blinkers of um, windows coming down the road, going to railroad over Amiga, and um, so they're actually. I think the as as is with most um, Amiga major uh, software developers or so software manufacturers, they were very uh, they were kind of getting in at that point in time, getting aware that Amiga will not survive. And then they have to like, oh, what are we going to do with all our Motorola assembler code? And <laughs> how are we going to um, get out of this um, architectural chained and locked down box we put ourselves into? So, so sa sadly, lots of the lots of the um, companies went through a, a vicious process of going bankrupt. <laughs> And dis disbanding the groups to work on other, they went to work for other companies on other platforms. Uh, so a little bit about the quality assurance on the compiler. I'm not really sure what JBB stands for, but um, there is some JBB specific files. Uh, and then test the program compilation, so the report sections, it's on separate dates. I think this is interesting from a historical perspective. Uh, and then we have a .demos directory. Also those that have been in the Amiga scene, then you see that, aha, there's a glimmering of the new um, Amiga chipset coming down the road. So they built some um, logos for that. Because it was high, uh, generated higher resolutions. And then you have the, um, actually here we do have the Amos um, professional compiler installation program. And that's the thing that we, uh, as far as I can see, we don't have in the root directory for the whole of the Amos Pro. Uh, we don't actually have the um, installer program. We might be able to find it, but um, I think we're missing that. So we have all the source code so we can compile the system, but we don't have the... Um, I have that part, but here it is. You can see that we actually have some something for the compiled part. And then, as usual in those days, one built lots of utilities because they weren't built into operating systems or available third party very easily. So, so then you had a file compare application, um, and then we had a 
hunt for strings and falls. Um, uh, resource bank maker. Mm, this will be of interest. This might be referring to memory banks in the Omega system architecture. I'm not really sure. And a library handle handler to create the Amos 2 uh, label table and then the internal routine table for Amos Pro. And I don't know why this what, what does this have to do with it? <laughs> create a list of all instructions and test them. So a bit of make checklist. Yeah, then there's the Amos Pro help source file converter. So they obviously they add a source, so that you, like most help compilers, that you, you build a source separately in a text file with all kinds of um, escape codes or whatever other mechanisms you use, keywords, and then um, you compile it into a help file then. And then a utility to create the link list of uh, link routines. And that includes, sorry, but that's the Amiga OS system includes. And then here we have this JBB graphics coming up again. Kind of get a feeling that that's part of the Arda Arga graphics implementation, not sure. JBB probes, but these are on programs. They're like um, icon definitions or something. And then there's only this one is a program. And that's the hex hex ed. <laughs> and then we have the root directory. So they got binary files. Now this is actually a, com uh, a thing that we don't have in the root uh, 3D uh, S the source code for that. Here we get some assigns. And then you see that we got this kind of weird like work that, that doesn't exist. If we do the developer and set up to be able to compile, then we don't get that kind of stuff. Um, bug says. And this is just a list of. As you see here, you see it's got like the plus sign and then it's S, so then you would think that this contains assembler, but it doesn't, it's, it's just text. So the, this is like, why did they move away from the, um, the, yeah, the rule they have? And then it's like this, uh, and it's a lot of like working files, sort of like hapless, so I, like here they created like plus C lib labels S, and then it's like, oh, it's just an empty file. I think th think th this might have been a partially run execution of one of the extra tools, so that's why I might, I might have bombed out and not produced the full result. And then we have compiler source, but that seems to be for an older version. And then we get the labels inside. They got a lot of these, uh, and if you look at the top level when we'd compiled it, then they were actually deleting the size dots uh, or underscore sizes and labels. They, they weren't keeping them. So in this directory, they haven't even been cleaned up. And then here we have some copy logic. And then here we get these copy files. And you see this will bomb out because we don't actually have this. So that's something net and work. That's something um, that they had on there, you know, like when when this was running on on, on there. Yeah, in the environment that they were working in with the network, they had, uh, and that would work. 
And then they have this concept where you could, uh, it was some kind of an idea where you could actually put the compiler on a separate bootable disk. Um, so then they had a few extra, they had a few tools to, or just to create the disk and um, make the, uh, make compiler and make extras. And then there's these D, they have these debug switches. Uh, and again, it's the irritating when they just have a plus and then they have an S, but it's not containing assembler, it's basically, let's say, um, no, that's assembler, yeah, because that sets, uh, uh, yeah, parameter to one. Or, but anyway, a little bit more codes than, uh, uh, did they have three? Yeah, it was three. So you had zero, one, and two, and then I was like, oh, yeah, okay, why, why so many? I don't know what and that's functions and size again, and jump tables and size, and it's a lot of like just um, not not really useful stuff. And then they have this is actually library offsets. So same thing that try those scripts for making the separate disks and then again they they're like and this is a mess of things like this is music should be a um, extension like if you look at the root thing and I think the, well, the one of the extensions was music and then it suddenly it's just like here I mean it's like what what's it doing here so this is also like lacking and uh, it's, uh, Libraries plus extension change, and then you have plus pro 2s, just suddenly out of nowhere. And then these labels and size, we can just ignore tokens. Uh, is there anything else of interest? And that's related to A3D, so to generate it. And that's the Amos Paul 3D lib. And again, like in the main directory of this directory, it's not in the subdirectory. Let's see, Adam Bagbar. Not a fault, DBL. And here it assembles stuff, and then it gets a, a chunk of it, and then it inserts it into an, into the destination file, and then that's probably the chunk number. Ah, uh, here here we have these like uh, if somebody's uh, historically uh, in this air, then then. Flush and drip, for example, it's that because it doesn't exist in the system, as far as I can find it. It's not part of the Amiga OS. I can't find it if I search for the commands, and they're not included in if you take the Git repository. And so again, lots of bit binary files. Compile the random utility, to copy stuff. And then it has some, uh, the editor config files, the binary files, as we discussed before, that all config data is in binary files. And then here we actually have the scripts to, like, do configuration of the debug setup. And then obviously this get then compiled into, um, into the source code, imported. No indication of what kind of a deep uh, debugging tool they had available. How, how the actual debugging works. Have a directory cloning utility if you want. <laughs> uh, this is interesting that um, uh, did they have the utility? Somewhere there's a utility. If I've just had a mind mind now that um, 
there is a utility or a method where you can actually get an ASCII dump of a .amos file. So if you have a .amos file, then you can actually create an ASCII dump. And I can't remember if there was a separate utility or was it built into the actual baseline tool. Uh, I think I looked into it. Um, and then here also, like enforcer source sheets. So what are those? Where do they come from? And then here's a personal, like Francis has um, his own um, config files. Uh, now here they're running the debugger. That's interesting. I missed that. Again, um, options. Now that's re definitely related to the compiler. So. Hmm. So there is a. I think there there, there is definitely a debug program on the. Um, but then of course this one, if that's part of the Highsoft implementation or something else, I don't know. And then this is the compiler. Some icon stuff. This is interesting, actually. This is a, an instruction list in OSCE. So it gives you all the Amos Pro 2 710 instructions. <laughs> that was hardcore enough to be interesting. Here it's doing more copying, but again it's to a network device so that we don't have in the initial setup. And then references to uh, that one, and then there's a hard code refer compared to certain disks and stuff. Oh, utility to compress a program file. And then unfranchise, where he um, <laughs> puts the config files back to the stand. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, oh, well, as discussed, I promised to give a, uh, a rundown of this directory. I don't, in, initially I would say that I don't think there's anything that interesting, uh, other than to conclude what I've concluded, that it seems to be just a copy of probably Franz Hirsch's own uh, working directory from from the ages and but it, it's not a compl you as as far as I can tell you can't really do very much with this it's not um, it's more like if you were like you, you you were the developer and then you have your own machine and then you have a separate machine where you actually have the production um, com compile and packaging and stuff so uh, th this is more like a, uh, yeah, a specific developer's machines. Anyway, I thought it was important to give a rundown because it, it is really confusing that when you actually pull down the source code and you suddenly get this <laughs> directory also. And I mean, most, most people, because they wouldn't recognize the files in the root structure all the subdirectories that are there so so sadly 99 percent of people would probably go for this directory and then they would they would look at it and look at it and look at it and 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 i i would think that uh, you'd lose a quite a large amount of people that were even interested in um, trying to compile the system when they hit this subdirectory. so i I, I would I would personally not have included this, or I would have named it something completely different, like uh, you know, I don't know, De definitely not the name that it currently has, because it's it's uh, definitely death for anybody who's <laughs> like coming in and is not familiar with it, and it's like what is this? And uh, surprisingly enough, I didn't. Um, I don't know why I didn't get snared into that, um, into the wish to look into this folder uh, initially when I was starting to work with compiling the. I think I, 
my my savior was that I actually started looking at the um, the files in the root, and then I found out that they were oh these are obviously script for I need a script files for compiling the system, and then I kind of like forgot about the existence of that directory because I thought it would, what would happen is that the scripts would then compile stuff that are in that directory and then when I went through the whole process and I found out that no, none of the scripts are using uh, any of the data the scripts use only the other subdirectories and, and not this subdirectory so then I started, oh, what, what is this subdirectory? <laughs> and um, yeah, and, and then I thought I'd make a uh, quick rundown of, and then I and I suppose the the, the reason for making this uh, video is to, is to, is the message that you know I, I stated in the previous video, which was the build video, but also again stating this video, you know don't don't um, you you can you have this as an interesting um, so so far as an interesting historical archive, but I, I've I failed to see what the um, other than other than as a sort of possibility to have more to look at, I, I don't for the core of the system. I don't think it really has any any meaning. I mean, the most important thing would be to find um, if somebody still had the um, installation programs for for Amos Pros. They are probably implemented as .amos code somewhere. But uh, as far as I can see, no, not in the um, repository on the GitHub repository. And then it's also the same could be said about the um, presumably the help media, the help sources, and the help compilers. So there is a few little nuts and bolts that are missing. Uh, that are that when you actually install Amos Pro with the compiler, uh, then uh, you will see that. Uh, but I don't think there's any any core uh, stuff is missing. It's yeah, more stuff on the periphery, uh, which is not um, available as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it wasn't the most interesting video, but I thought it was important to get the message out there. Don't stumble around in this directory, but you will know it's the <laughs> honeypot directory. It's like trying to suck you into it, and then if you end up in it, then you won't get anywhere. It's hopeless. Ah, see you in the next one.